today our drilling video is on hole tortuosity uh, and as the name implies borehole tortuosity would imply that we're drilling a well bore that's very rough uh, rugged irregular and not smooth we like to think of a well bore being like the drawing on the board here in which it's a very regular very smooth but the reality is when we drill a well bore, our bottom hole assembly may move around in the well bore. And when we drill this well bore with a lot of moving around, then we end up with a well bore that's irregular and our pass through diameter is not what we expect it to be uh, based on the bit size. Now there are uh, several causes that we could have to, to have a I call it a, a non-usable well bore, and hole tortuosity is just one of several, uh, but we're only going to talk about borehole tortuosity uh, today. But some other causes, potential causes of not having a, uh, I call it having a non-usable well bore in which the pass-through diameter is not equal to the bit diameter, it could be an undergaged bit. So if you have an undergauge bit condition, uh, an example of that would be you're drilling along and then the bit just simply wears on the side. When it wears on the side, uh, it just starts drilling a smaller hole than the OD of the bit when it went in a hole. So the, the initial OD would be that OD and then it drills a smaller borehole uh, as the bit goes undergaged. Uh, another potential cause could, is, I call it, it could be having uh, bridges from inadequate hole cleaning. So if you don't have uh, adequate hole cleaning, then we can have the condition in which uh, that is, let me find my slide here inadequate hole cleaning, you can have, uh, be drilling well, typically they're going to be a directional well, let's say a 62 degree angle well, and then the bottom of the hole you form cuttings beds on the bottom of the hole if you don't have good enough hole cleaning such that you end up with a case with a pass-through diameter between the top of the cuttings bed and the top of the borehole is less than the diameter of the casing that you want to run our tool size. So this diameter here is greater, this diameter is greater than the diameter you have remaining above the cuttings bed and it simply is, is not adequate for getting the casing in the ground. Another uh, potential cause from over and beyond in I, inadequate hole cleaning could be borehole instability. So if you have uh, borehole instability, uh, there actually could be two possible causes of borehole instability. One could be mechanical and one could be chemical in nature. If you have a mechanical instability, it's related to rock mechanics. So you could have the case that the formation has a certain uh, pore pressure uh, and is pushing against your borehole and you have mud inside the borehole which is pushing back against the, the formation. Well, if the mud weight is not adequate, what can happen is that the actual, over a portion of the well bore, it actually just closes in because of the uh, rock mechanics effect and borehole stability and you end up with a smaller pass-through diameter. You also can have a chemical effect. Our well bores are, uh, have a lot of different type of clays, clay minerals, uh, and they, if they are exposed to water-based muds, water-based muds, the chemistry of water-based muds, uh, we try to keep them as I call it close to the chemistry of the clays that we drill as close as possible, but these clays that we drill through 
are extremely reactive and if we have water-based muds, they react with the clay swell. And when these clays swell, they have a tendency to, I call it, enlarge themselves. And so in a portion of the well bore where the chemistry of our mud is not right, again, we can end up with a case where I pass through diameter and we call that tight hole, you know, from, from the chemistry of our mud. Today, we quite often use a non-aqueous drilling fluids, which is not water-based, uh, using synthetic-based drilling fluids, which helps inhibit uh, the, the aspect of these swelling clays. Uh, they're much better mud, but they're more expensive to operate. Uh, another possible case causing uh, a non-usable well bore could be uh, just a borehole curvature and the pipe stiffness itself. So here's a, just a drawing uh, that I drew to illustrate this condition. You could have two different well bores in which uh, the well bore on the left has a low dog leg rate. And so this black line would represent the curvature of the well bore. It would also equal the curvature of the drill pipe or casing or anything else that's run in that well bore. It's gonna have to take on the shape of the, of, of the borehole. And then on the right, we have a higher dog leg, and this might be the curvature of that well bore with a higher dog leg. Using the properties of a circle, we actually can calculate the displacement y in both cases, say over the length of a 45 foot joint of casing that would be required to bend that pipe through that curvature. Uh, we also can go back to our mechanics and materials that we took in college and derive the equation for this displacement, y. Uh, it happens to be if you have a uniform load, like I've drawn on the left here, with equal uh, force along that pipe wall, uh, the displacement is 5 over 384 times the total load times the length cubed divided by the modulus of elasticity and the moment of inertia. Now the moment of inertia for a pipe, it can be calculated as pi over 64 times the OD to the fourth minus the ID to the fourth. Uh, now some aspects about this that's important is that uh, you can see from this equation that the force is gonna be related to the OD to the fourth power. So therefore, uh, you might have no trouble whatsoever drilling this well with say a five inch drill pipe because you're dealing with a five inch drill pipe OD to the fourth power. But if you're gonna run say 11 and three quarter chasing through the same curvature, when you put 11 and three quarter in this equation for the moment of inertia and take the fourth power of it, the moment of inertia is, become, is going to become a very, very big number. Uh, also, uh, the drag in both cases is going to be related to the force W that we can calculate from the uniform load in the curvature times a friction coefficient between our mud and our borehole, our pipe and our borehole. And it just so happens to be if our drag, due to our conditions of a, having a large casing and a large high dog leg is greater than the buoyed pipe weight, then our pipe won't naturally go down into that well bore. So that is, you never can take this for granted. And this is some of the work that you do when you do the torque and drag modeling on a, on a directional well. All right. So... Then the last case is just the, the borehole tortuosity itself. And the way I describe that is that our bottom hole assembly can simply move around in the well bore and end up with a path that's, I call it, not a smooth well bore. And our pass through diameter through this is not equal to the bit diameter. Now, there are you know, some natural causes. Uh, that we do not have to do anything, I call it, 
for uh, our home to have tortuous well path. Uh, one is, I call it the path of least resistance. So the path of least resistance is when we are drilling a well, we always have, I call it, dipping beds, and we always go through hard and soft formations. So if we had a bit that entered this soft well, tag the top of that soft well bore, the bit had rather drill the soft formation. So all things being equal, nature wants to take the path of least resistance. So the bit is more than likely going to move over something like this and then it's going to drill down to the bottom of this formation uh, in, in the soft formation. When it gets to the bottom of the soft formation, it wants to stay in the soft formation as long as possible. So it's, then it's going to move over again and continue to drill on down to the top of the next bed. When it gets to the top of the next bed, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to move over, then it's going to move over again, and this is just going to continue uh, throughout the formations. And the driller is not doing anything to cause this to happen. It's just happening on its own. Another case in which this can uh, take place is, I call it, is, is gravity. Gravity is always working and we can't do anything to, to cut it off. Gravity is always, I call it, at work on our well bores and there's nothing we can do to, to stop it. So here's a, a, a diagram that I drew to represent a well bore being drilled. Let's just say 62 degrees of angle and it happens to be two o'clock in the morning. The driller has been on tower since six o'clock that evening. He's uh, sort of tired and the derrickman or assistant driller comes and asks him, would you eat like a cup of coffee? And he says, sure, that would be great. So the Derek man comes and, and, and leaves him, brings him his cup of coffee. And so the, the driller simply uh, I call it locks his brake. So he locks his brake down for a few moments, ties his chain down, and then he walks over to the doghouse uh, and uh, goes in the doghouse. And it happens to be a, a coffee can sitting on top of a shelf in the doghouse, and it's got a Folgers written on it. F O L G E R S. Folgers. Folgers coffee can that's got sugar in it. So the driller goes into the doghouse and locks his brake and puts sugar in his coffee for 45 seconds or a minute. And this rotary, I mean, this rotary assembly here that we have here is rotating at, say, a 60 RPMs. And it's got, you know, a lot of weight down on it. Maybe it's got 20,000 pounds on that bit down at 62 degrees. And while he's putting sugar in his coffee, he comes back, he picks up the brake, and while this bit is on the bottom of the hole, sure enough, the bit undercuts itself, it eats down an inch or two, and then he continues drilling, and now we've created another dog leg in a well in which our pass-through is no longer equal to the diameter of our well bore. So it's caused by, in this case, putting sugar in his coffee. 